All right, now that we've got the data analysis tool pack installed, I'm going to switch over to exclusively using the Excel desktop app. Now, at if at any point I'm going to use a function or a feature that is available only in the desktop version of the app and not on the web version, I will let you know. That way it, you'll readily be able to tell if it is acting differently than it will on the web for you. So that's how I'm going to handle it. So I have the desktop app up and I've got a sample data set in here. And what I want to do now is start moving into some of the descriptive statistics and summary statistics that you're going to be asked to produce. So what I've got is a data set where we have a, a continuous variable and then a, a categorical here with the blood pressure category. And this is trying to determine if they're hypertense and hypertension patients or not. Uh, and what I want to do is summarize this, but I'm not going to use the descriptive uh, statistics and summary tool in the data analysis tool pack. We're going to use the COUNTIF function. So to do that, uh, there's a little bit of thinking that goes on here as you're working through some of your Excel spreadsheets and how you're going to present this data to know ahead of time how much space you need and some of the steps that you have to do uh, to think ahead before you do another. And that's why I'm going to start out over here in columns I, J, and K. And I've given the column widths plenty of room to store the data that's going to be there. And you'll see why that is um, in a moment. So what I want to do is I want to get the frequency, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency of my categorical variable. All right. So I'm going to take this data here. And I'm going to copy it out, so I'm hitting Control C, and then I'm going to paste it into column I, starting on the second row. All right. Then I want to get just a unique set of those values. And let's just imagine for a moment that this wasn't blood pressure; that maybe there were 14 or 15 different values in here, even even nine or 10. Uh, I need to get a unique set of those. And to do that, we're going to make a separate copy and then go over to the Data tab and then click on the Remove Duplicates button, all right? When I click on that, it's going to tell me which column I'm selecting. If the data is together, if it's continuous, meaning one column right after another, you might get a warning asking you to expand the selection. If you've selected the right data, then you do not want to expand the selection, which is usually the case. And we'll just click OK, or you will answer no to that question, and then you'll get a unique list of options. There were 21 duplicates that were removed and four unique values remain, and that's what I would expect there to be. All right, I'm going to label the, the column header here uh, characteristic, okay? And then on, on the um, column J header, I'm going to call this frequency. All right, because that's where the frequency is actually going to go. We're going to use the COUNTIF function to do this. Now, one thing I have to think about ahead of time is the order in which I want to present this data. So it's categorical, but it's also ordinal, meaning that normal comes first, then prehypertension, then stage one, then stage two. Now, when it found the duplicates, it didn't put the data in that order for me. Excel doesn't know what that order means. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And one one quick way to do it is to cut the values out. So I'm hitting Control X, putting it in the first row on the column J, and then going and finding prehypertension and putting it in the next one. And then stage one goes third and stage four goes last. So it's just control X and control V. I'm basically just copying and pasting. Then I'm going to take that whole set, hit control X to copy it out, select the first cell and paste it back. Okay, now it's in the order I need it to be in. If I would have gone and done the calculation, it would have worked fine. But when I display it in a chart, it'll be out of order and I need it to be in the order in which it goes from least risky to most risky. So now we'll go ahead and do the count function. So I'll do equals count if we'll find count if there the range that I want to select are all the values from column D except the header and then I'm going to tell it that I want to count only if the value equals the value located in the cell next to it which is in this case normal all right and then we'll close parenthesis and hit enter so there are seven normal entries that's correct now I want to copy this down but to do that I need to make the reference to the range an absolute reference because I don't want that to shift. So you'll remember if we put a dollar sign in front of the column in row, it will make it an absolute reference. Okay, now I can go ahead and grab the lower right corner, copy it down, and I've got counts. All right, 
quickly built a frequency table for my, my uh, ordinal values. Now, I'm going to select the four values and then go over to the uh, Home tab and then click on Auto Sum. And that will sum automatically, puts the function in there for me, the formula in the four values and then drops it in below the data set and I've made it bold so that uh, I can pick it out pretty easily. All right, so now I have the frequency in there. Let's go ahead and let's do the relative frequency. All right, so let's spell this out correctly. Relative frequency. And to do that, our relative frequency calculation is the number of values in that category divided by the number of values we have in total. And so we're going to use equal sign and say we're going to divide the cell uh, in column J divided by the total. All right, and we need to make one edit. We do not want the formula for the reference to the total to be a relative reference. We want it to be absolute. We want it to stay in place as we copy it down. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now it's copied down. I've previously formatted this, but most likely when you look at it the first time, it's going to have just be decimals. It won't have the actual percentage. So you'll need to come in here and select the percentage. I like at least one decimal place. Uh, that's, that's fine. All right, that's relative frequency. Let's go ahead and do the last one, which is the cumulative frequency. And I always like to shortcut this here. I've already typed frequency and I want me to type it again. All right, there's my cumulative frequency. We'll even put relative frequency together a little bit there. Uh, and this one's pretty simple. So we're gonna say this equals what's in column J. And then what we're gonna do is go through is just add the previous value to the next value. So plus sign in that one. And then we're just gonna copy that down, right? So when we get to the end, our 25 here should equal the 25 there. All right, that's our cumulative frequency. All right, nice and easy. Now, last thing we're going to do is add in a chart here. We're going to put a histogram in. So I'm going to select cell I8 and we'll go to the insert menu. And then we're going to choose uh, a, a graph here. And there is a histogram graph in here already, but I want to show you how to do this manually. So we're going to choose the bar chart section, a 2D bar chart. Uh, and it would be helpful if I selected data before we start. So let's go ahead and select uh, from I to all the way to J4, which is the four, the four categories plus the four frequencies. Uh, insert, bar, and we've got our chart in there. Now I'm gonna line this up so it looks kinda nice and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Then what I'm gonna do it, to make this a histogram is we need to click on one of the bars and we'll get the format data series over here. If you don't, you can right click on the bar and then choose format data series from there. So let's just say that wasn't here. Right click on the bar, format data series. We want to go to gap width. We want to select it, double click on it, the whole thing, and make it zero. Okay. And then when I do that, all the bars will be right next to each other. Now, I like to have at least a solid line between them. So let's select the bars again. Make sure you're on the fill and line selection and choose solid line and let's just make it a black line. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm a bit picky about having chart titles, so we're going to add a chart title. There is one by default, so we're going to call this um, frequency of uh, blood pressure uh, categories. All right. And then we need to add a label for our X and Y axis. So to do that, we're going to go to add chart element, axis title. For the horizontal axis, we are going to label this uh, blood pressure category. I could have just labeled it BP, but for you know non-healthcare people, we love our acronyms, right? And that can be a problem if people don't know what we're talking about. Uh, and then uh, for, we'll go back and we'll add an axis title to the vertical axis and we're going to call this one frequency. All right, so that one's in there. Now I have a couple more things I can do. I can select both of those uh, and make these bold, make them a little bit bigger. Same with the category down here, bold it, make it bigger. Uh, also, if I, if I just click in some open space here, I can change the size 
of of the space in which those bars are occupying in case I want to make this really big and line it up. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over here, shrink it down a bit, and then pull this back out. All right, so you have some control over how you want to lay out the chart. You could spend an inordinate amount of time doing that, <laughs> just trying to make it look good. Um, I, so now, I think we're at a really good place. We've counted everything using the count if function. We've created a, uh, a, a relative frequency calculation. We've done the cumulative frequency, and now we've created a histogram off of it. So you are all set to go. On to the next video.